Hey all you Resolume people out there, welcome to my newest tutorial for Halftone Screens. Halftone Screens creates a halftone effect on your medium in five different ways. There's lines, there's the half circles, the echo line, wavy lines, and the texture in, which is affected by your medium that you put into the design. I will give a better example in these particular cases. For example, wavy lines creates this random effect of wavy lines on your image. So let's take this squirrel for example. I'm able to adjust the lines themselves so that they are more out of whack and are randomly uh, noisy within the area that they've been uh, applied. You also have the option to change the randomness of the actual wavy lines themselves. So if I have a specific, if I have two wavy lines, both of them can be unique from each other. There are options down at the bottom that you will see here that are only pertaining to specific options that are at the top. One, the first one, one lines, is only affected by the first three options. So for instance, up and down is now moving up and down, of course, and you're able to do left and right. In some cases, this is not an option. There will be other options, however, for example, in half circles. Half circles, there's actually an option for rotation to rotate the entire uh, half circle uh, design. In this particular case, you'll notice that there's an offset here that does not look proper. There are ways that I have set aside to make it so that you are able to adjust those particular lines. In this example, I'm going to turn this back to zero so that it's easier to watch or to see. I'm going to change my align amount, and when I do, you'll notice that I'll be able to align the setup. That looks fairly decent. We can get a little closer. Oh, well, that's not close enough. Let's get in here and really dial in a number. That looks pretty good. If there is a particular type of shape that doesn't seem to be lo uh, looking correct, you'll always be able to hit this check pattern to be able to check the pattern itself to make sure that it aligns with everything else. This particular effect has been set up in such a way that you have the options for the actual image or the actual media content. You're able to adjust the brightness and the contrast of those particular images. However, graphics that have a well-defined contrasted areas or have a good composition work better. For example, the squirrel is a perfect example. He is very grayish against this background. He's not defined well, so he's hard to gra to for the system to uh, create a, a proper image. However, there are times when this is not an issue. For instance, in wavy lines, if I tone down the image blur and bring down the contrast or bring up the contrast just a little bit and adjust the brightness just a touch then maybe change the line thickness and add more lines you'll notice that the particular graphic is working better this is the case because the actual image that's there has a great deal of trees that are the same contrast as the squirrel however what the squirrel is sitting on is a little bit brighter, so it has a tendency to stick out more than the squirrel does. This bird is a perfect example as well of something that is a better of, con of better contrast. I'm able to adjust this a little bit more, uh, a little easier. He's able, he's easier to, to control within his space because he dominates because of his high contrast within the image itself. There are two, like I said, there are two setups here. There's the texture image at the top, 
but then there's also the line format at the bottom. The line format at the bottom is to adjust the actual lines within the halftone screen. There are certain options down here, for instance, you can change your line thickness so that the lines themselves are much, much, much thicker, and they can get pretty crazy. The line blur blurs the image of the actual line. This works within the image, it works along with the image blur. The two images blurred, the lines themselves and the actual contrast or the, the blurriness of the photo, will blur the lines between the two images. And where the two images meet, they will make very interesting and unique lines. And that is how this tends to work better. So for instance, if I hike up the image contrast or the line contrast, I hike down the line thickness, but hike up the actual amounts of lines, I'll get a very dramatic effect. You'll notice here is an example of where the check pattern option could be helpful. There's this line here. I don't know if you can see it. However, it is a bit distracting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust it just a little bit so that that line doesn't stick out. There. Now the image doesn't look so uh, off kilter. There doesn't seem to be that thick line showing up in the middle of the image. Let's discuss some of the other options that are available. You have the option to do echo lines, which creates this circle pattern. The circle pattern can also be changed in many different ways. For instance, there is the ability to actually make it into a straight line. There are ways that you can bend this or you can adjust the way in which it looks. The rotation can also be changed and you can spin it a great deal. Now let's talk about the texture in. Texture in takes the medium of the graphic that you apply to it and creates a wrap around the actual image itself. So I'll give you an example. Here's a picture of myself. You'll notice that it's actually wrapping around parts of my face. This is just a webcam. The webcam allows the actual image to give this kind of curved look. It's pretty interesting and pretty gives some pretty good results. You're able to adjust the brightness, which will change the way in which the screen is being is affecting the actual image itself and the contrast. The contrast is based on a gradient. So the gradient is what creates the bend within the within the object. You also have the option to adjust the amount of bend that actually happens. You can really get some seriously strange effects, which can be fun. My biggest interest right at this moment has been the Connect camera. Connect allows you to send a depth map. The depth map allows you to actually create that sense of folds within those areas. To create this effect, I used the depth camera and the actual IR of the depth of the Connect camera as well. The IR is sitting on top of the uh, depth map. The depth map has also a threshold on it specifically. That allows me to control the amount of noise that's behind me that you do not see. For example, if I turn off the actual infrared and just show just my image with just the threshold, this is what you receive. The IR allows it to feel a little bit more 
quiet. There's not as much noise. There's not as much other things that are going on. There's some really nice features that you could do with this, though. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and it's gone through the things that you would like to know more about. If you're interested in finding out more about the things that this particular uh, uh, effect or patch can do, give me a holler. My email address is jacobmesick, M-E-S-I-C-K, at gmail.com. Thank you very much for watching my patch, my tutorial, and you be sure to have a good day.